Hi, I'm John, and welcome back to the shop. We've got an exciting video in store for you if you're very interested in drill trucks and drill trucks run out. I recently bought myself a new milling machine, a Grizzly G0759. I'm pretty happy with the machine. One of the things I got for free with the package was this little 3 to 16 millimeter chuck from Grizzly. Um, thing's a piece of junk. So I knew immediately after I tried to repair this one and get it running true, which I've done a ton of work to, that I needed a better chuck. So I wanted an Albright, that's what we use at work, either the Albright keyless chucks or the Jacobs keyless chucks. So we've got them on everything from drill presses to milling machines. Um, and I knew I wanted an Albright. So I looked around a little bit, oh my lord, oh my lord, a new Albright chuck, half inch capacity, is like $600. Um, I wasn't going to spend that for my own shop at home and the Jacobs keyless truck wasn't a whole lot less so I think I could get one on sale for like $350. I knew I wasn't going to spend $350 on a keyless truck. My whole mill cost $2,000 so I started looking for less expensive options. So keyless trucks are ubiquitous on eBay um, but they really don't come with any sort of guarantee on run out. So this original truck I got with my Grizzly um, as as it was delivered, 15 thou run out, uh, completely unusable. I wanted something a little more reasonable run out wise. So when I looked around, I ended up snagging this Tagara. Um, it is made in Taiwan. I bought it from Shars. It was $110.95. Um, and it came with an accuracy guarantee of two thousandths. Uh, and it was rated for 7,000 RPM. So I can't spin it to 7,000 RPM. Um, I got this chuck, and initially it was pretty stiff. I wasn't uh, super happy with it. I mean, it did seem to make, it did seem to run true. I didn't know how true. Um, in one of my other videos, I said that hey, maybe I would do a review after I've been running this for a while. So that's what we're doing here today. Uh, it opens up to half inch capacity. I think it's pretty handsome as far as chucks go, but you know, to each their own. The jaws are hardened, and according to Shars, they are tin, like T-I-N coated. I imagine, just looking at the color here, that what they actually mean are like T-I, capital N, uh, titanium nitride coated. They're supposed to be 60 Rockwell hardness. Um, I haven't really had a problem with this guy. I bought it, threw it in the mill, been very happy with it, but it's kind of nagged me about that 2,000th run out. So I decided to test that. Um, I'm sure in the factories with all of these chucks, they probably have some purpose-built equipment to do that. You know, some sort of jig that the drill truck would sit in. Um, you know, they, they always indicate out a certain distance from the chuck jaws. They probably choose an intermediate size piece of ground shaft that they know is very true. And they chuck out, you know, I don't know, maybe an inch from the chuck jaws. I have no idea what the actual procedure is. I know I could not replicate that here in my home shop. So what I did have was a Michitoyo uh, tense indicator, and that's what I used. And that that Michitoyo had been verified was like in 2005. So my results might not actually be perfect. Um, I do trust that indicator. I mean, I've never dropped it on the floor, but um, what it is a good is it's comparative. So a lot that don't have R8 tapers, um, I went ahead and I used my my lathe, and I did some comparisons. And once I started, I couldn't stop. So I ended up. Uh, doing 10 or 12 chucks in the same way. So my test procedure, um, provided they opened up far enough to, to hold all three reamers, I used a quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch. Now, not all of these chucks will open up to half inch, um, but I'm not gonna go over all the numbers for everything, but it, but it was very telling. So some, some of these chucks uh, that I thought were good because they were a good brand turned out not to be, and this, which I had no idea, this turned out to be fantastic. So I'll just jump to the chase here in case you only wanna watch a couple of minutes of the video. Provided you use the provided Tommy bar to, to tighten the chuck, um, this thing in everything I tested it in is always below two thousandths. So I did a bunch of tests at a, the quarter inch reamer and I came out to uh, one thousandths and yeah, basically just over one thousandths, um, three eighths, one thousandths, three tenths, and half inch, um, one thousandths about nine tenths. So that is something I learned across the board, doesn't matter which chuck, the closer you get to the maximum chucking size for them, so half inch, this is a five eighths, you know, three eighths, whatever it's rated to, the accuracy for a uh, total indicated run out goes way up. So I had no idea um, that that was the case, but I think it kind of makes sense if you look at it 
just the way they work mechanically. Um, but, so I imagine when they uh, test these in a laboratory or um, when they do the QC check at the factory, however they decide to do it, they use something right in the middle of the range um, because that's where they all seem to be the most accurate. So this uh, came out really well, uh, fantastic. I did learn to use the Tommy bar. I don't know the actual amount of foot pounds that you should use on one of these, um, you know, but you know, just anytime you tighten something, you know, go till it's tight, give her a little eighth or sixteenth more of a turn. That seems to be plenty. I did find was these Jacobs trucks, the ball bearing trucks. Um, now most of mine are, are second hand um, that I've gotten at auctions or whatever, but they all seem to test about the same. And it doesn't matter which one you get, they all seem to have between two and three and a half uh, thousandths. Somewhere in there, just they all fall into, with the very exception of this Jacobs 59B. So when I bought this chuck, it was fairly corroded. I uh, found a rebuild kit on eBay. I bought the rebuild kit, which had new chuck jaws. This thing's fantastic. This thing is not as good as the new uh, Taiwanese made Tagara, uh, but this thing was well, let's see. This thing was well under two thousandths on everything it tested as well. So this thing is this thing is solid. I was really surprised to see that. These super chucks, um, really good. Some of the other imports, um, and by imports I mean from Germany. And this is an old chuck with this Rome or Rom, however you say it. Uh, middle of the road. Uh, I have a few Japanese chucks um, that I tested on the lathe as well. They were all about the same. So they were about the same quality as the Jacobs. So. Um, as far as silky smoothness and adjusting it with your hand, it, it's not an Albright. Um, it's got a little weird stiction to it. I did clean this up really, really well um, and oil it, and that seemed to help. Um, the chuck jaws being perfectly dry also seems to help the test results. But I think for $110, um, I'd be hard-pressed to, to really want to upgrade, ever. So I don't know that on paper, the Albright or the Jacobs or whatever other high-end brand you purchase, I don't know that you'd get a whole lot less total indicated run out than this unit here. So for the home shop, I'm not talking for these guys that are CNC operators that do this for a living. Obviously, I think the higher end um, chucks probably last longer. Um, clamping pressure is probably more consistent but in the home shop, um, I can't imagine ever needing anything more accurate than this. So I'm usually really hesitant to endorse anything to anybody at any time. But I'm going to say, man, for $110, I don't think you can go wrong. Now, this is a sample size of one. Uh, this is just the one chuck that I have. And every way that I have to test it, it seems fantastic. I've used it quite a bit. I've drilled a couple thousand holes in the last few months. I really like it. Uh, when I... I guess as a testimonial to it, uh, when I have more just free money sitting around, I'm going to buy another identical chuck to this with a more with the integral Morris II taper. So I imagine that that's part of the secret to how accurate this is, is that the integral, integral arbor, um, I definitely can't see any scenario where that would hurt. So I imagine they test this with the arbor, so I don't know exactly how it's assembled or anything, but I imagine they test this as a component piece altogether. So I know there is some run out in my spindle. Um, there just has to be, especially in a $2,000 mill. But I think I'd be hard pressed with any drill chuck in my mill to get any better numbers than this. Uh, I mean, if I wanted less run out, I would just use a collet. And um, I don't know what higher endorsement I can give to a piece of equipment, especially a piece of equipment that was made uh, in the Far East. So Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I really did. Um, I wrote pages and pages and pages of numbers. Um, I did a bunch of tests. Um, and the, the numbers I don't think lie. So my findings were surprising, but I think in a good way. So I hope you really enjoyed this. Um, if there's anything I could do different or better or anything else you'd like to see, please leave a comment. Otherwise, I appreciate you stopping by the shop. Have a good night.